morning everybody and welcome to today's tutorial we will show you how to make these gorgeous bibs in your 5x7 hoop you will need some stabilizer I'm going to use a, a tear away stabilizer today and I already pre-cut my five pieces you will need five pieces of fabric now the pieces are not uh, very big so as long as they fit in your 5x7 hoops I would say cut them all 5x7 for all five pieces that you need and you need a piece of batting for every piece that you're going to stitch on the front the batting should be a thin quilters batting so no thick batting please one large piece of fabric for the back which we will sew on later on uh, with your sewing machine today i'm not going to use any of the embroidery pictures just to save time on the actual uh, tutorial uh, but you will find the picture ones included as well as a blank one so we're going to do the blank one today and for this I've printed some fabric on my sublimation printer this is satin fabric hoop one layer of cutaway stabilizer so no fabric just your stabilizer you will stitch your first step directly onto your stabilizer and then place your batting and then stitch the next step which is a tack down step and you will notice that it will give you a little bit of an offset that is just so we don't have any uh, batting in the uh, seam allowance you can then go ahead and trim around all the extra batting away we will now place our top fabric you can use 505 spray to adhere it in the hoop that's personal preference and then go ahead and stitch the next step which will be your bottom quilting stitch that will be visible on the front of your bib then stitch the placement step for your top applique fabric that we're going to place I'm going to use the same color thread so I'm just um, pushing start again on my machine you can now go ahead and add your applique fabric on top if you're going to uh, stitch some of the pictures you will just use plain white fabric in this case or any color that you wish but not a print so that your picture actually stands out on your background the next step will be a tack down stitch so it will be a very thin zigzag stitch that will go all around your your panel and we will now trim away the excess fa um, fabric around do not cut through the bottom fabric notice that we're only cutting the top layer you can now take it back to your machine and to stitch the, the quilting step after that is done um, if you do have a picture you will of course um, finish the rest of the design as well as the satin stitch that will be the last step we're now going to trim the pieces so they're all ready for the next step i've already done um, because the left and the right is the same i've already done the other side as well so you will cut closely to the edge just on the straight edges so really close to the stitches you will cut that out the rest you will not cut i'm just trimming away the extra stabilizer so it doesn't get in the way when i place them in the hoop you can trim both of these pieces in the same manner and place them separate till needed. We're now going to do the top pieces. Again, there will be a left and a right for those. But we will place the bottom half during this process, so keep on watching. Again, stitch the first step onto your stabilizer, then place your batting. 
then st stitch the next step and then we're going to trim away the extra batting. Again you will notice an offset that is again so that there is no fabric or batting in that seam allowance to make it easier to turn it inside out later on after we've sewn it together. Again you're going to add your white fabric or your printed fabric on top and then stitch the quilting that goes over that. So these steps are exactly the same as your first two panels that you've done apart from where we will be joining the, the pieces together. I'm just leaving that flap um, open there so that we have a nice uh, seamless join at the middle and a clean finish there. We will now add the bottom piece. You will see that it will create a seamless join. But I'm first going to just trim away the stabilizer at the back. So not the fabric, only the stabilizer. Because I need to fold over this raw edge. Um, so that we don't have a raw seam showing in the front of our bib. And we will do this on all sides where uh, you will place fabric and where it will join uh, or meet another piece of fabric at the back. So on that side and on the bottom again you will do this. And I'm just using some sticky tape just to keep it in place while being stitched. And I've used Fibre Fast Spray at the back of my panel just to keep it in place. Don't worry about the extra fabric at the bottom there for now. Uh, you will notice that we will trim it away a, li a little bit later on. We removed it from the hoop after the satin stitch just finished and we're now going to trim away all this extra fabric from the back. So you don't have a very bulky... Oops, sorry I'm going off screen there for a moment. There you can see I already cut the, the fabric at the back. And you're going to do the other side in the exact same uh, method. So you will now have a completed left and a completed right and at the back you have now um, just cleaned up your design. I'm not cutting all around the bib, I'm just doing um, on, on these, um, as you can see in the picture, just where it's going to join the middle. We will trim um, the rest of the bib later on after we joined everything together. Now let's get ready to do the middle section where we will join the left and the right together. The method again is exactly the same, hoop stabilizer, stitch first step, add batting, next step, then trim away the extra batting around the edge. Then place your base fabric, I'm using a little bit of Fire for Fire Spray. Do make sure that if you have a grain on your fabric, that it follows the grain on the left and the right. You see I just uh, turned my fabric so that you don't have it. So it looks like a continuous piece of fabric that you've used. So no one will notice this was done in a small hoop when you've finished. Stitch the bottom section, same as in the first panel. Place your printed fabric or if you're going to use a plain fabric, you will do that. We're going to stitch the tack down stitches now. By the way, if you don't want the quilting on top, you can just skip that step. So just move your machine past that step and you won't have the quilting on top. We're going to trim away the extra fabric around the edge. And then before we stitch the satin, we're going to place our bib sides. Now you'll notice I've trimmed it nice and neat so that it follows the shape. And then I've sprayed it with Fiber Fast Spray at the bottom. 
and I'm placing my fabric and remember to turn your raw edges inside out I actually forgot mine there but remember to turn them um, to fold them just a little bit inward so you don't sit with a raw edge Making sure everything is neatly secure in the hoop and can't move, you will now continue to stitch the satin stitch. You will notice that the underlay will stitch first and if you see any, any little bits uh, that you actually want to, to just um, neaten up a little bit, just before the satin starts, you can go in quickly and just trim away those little edges so that you have a seamless finish. And then complete the rest of the satin. We are now done with the embroidery machine folks. And just look at that front of the bib. Real easy to do. You can remove it from the hoop. And we're now going to clean up the back by first removing all the stabilizer. That's why tear away is, is quite handy, you simply tear it away. If you use cut away, you will need to trim it carefully uh, next to the stitches. I'm now going to trim away the extra fabric around the satin. Be careful not to cut the stitches. At this stage I would like to just give it a good press. By ironing it you're not only um, adhering the, the um, stitches nicely, but as, you, as the stitches get warm, because it's a polyester um, or iron's um, thread, um, it shrinks a little bit, um, tightening everything up quite nicely. So you will get a much, much neater finish. And then if you remove the tape to iron, it just iron them nice and flat, all those double seams that you have made. So that when we stitch the back on, that we don't see those, those raw edges. You can now take it back to the embroidery machine. And I'm going to remove the tear away from the back. That outer line of stitches is basically just a guide for you um, if you want to follow that to stitch. Otherwise, just use a, a quarter of an inch seam allowance around your bib. Remember to leave an opening at the bottom. I'm going with a quarter seam allowance all around my bib and I'm now trimming the excel, excess fabric away. I'm using pinking shears uh, so that I don't have any unraveling of um, my cotton fabric that I've used. At the bottom, leave a little bit of a tail so that we have something to fold inwards to give it a very neat finish. Remember folks, the aim of all my in the hoop embroidery designs is so that people don't even know it was done on an embroidery machine or in a small hoop but rather on, on big machines. You can now turn your bib inside out. give it a good press making sure that you have all your seams neatly pressed out. I like to use a, a wooden dowel or a wooden um, stick or something to just to make sure all those little bits are nicely pushed outward before I iron. After you iron it you can just um, Push those little flaps inside out by doubling them. 
and then give it a good press again so it lies neatly flat. You can see how I follow the, the sides of the, of the bib there as a guide and I'm now going to do the front as well. If there's a little bit of the stabilizer in your way when you're doing this, you may trim it away at the back. And then you will sew close that opening. I'm just sewing right there on the embroidery um, stitch, but by all means you can hand stitch it as well if you like. We're now ready to add the cam snaps to the top. You will need two pointy bits. And then you will need a male and a female part of your, your cam snaps. The cam snap machine as well as the cam snaps uh, can be bought from camsnaps.com. I'm first using a very sharp dowel and I'm pushing a hole through. And there's no real measurement where you want those snaps. I just put, place them right at the top corner. I'm pushing through my pointy bit. And I've got my one die already inside my machine. So I'm pushing the part that goes with that die inside. And then I'll place my bib and I'll just push down on the machine. And it's firmly in place. You can now do the same with the other side. Again, I'm pushing a hole through. This time the pointy bit goes from the back, so the solid part of it is at the back. And because we're using the other part, we need to switch our dies. And there you are folks, all ready. The pink one and that minty color one with the gray stripes at the bottom, those two bits with, with the big top are only in the big hoop sizes because they need a big hoop size to be able to do. The ones with the, what looks like little windows, they are both in the smaller two hoop sizes. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and we hope to see you back soon. Remember to subscribe to our channel and then clicking on the little bell so you are notified the moment that we publish a new video tutorial for you.